Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. All right, I've been thinking a lot about the gear that I have and possibly the gear that I want. And what I've come up with is what's going on right now. And I'm gonna share that with you. Basically I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, I'm gonna say four cameras. I'm not gonna include action cams or owns or any of that shit. Basically I have a Sony a7R IV, a Sony a7C, and two Sony ZV-1s. I've been trying to figure out a good flow and how all that works together. And over the past, we'll say three, four years since I got back into the whole photography, videography game, I have been going through cameras and camera systems and lenses and you name it, left and right. And I finally have it pared down to what I've got now. I've said this before, that I'm pretty happy with what I have now, just trying to figure out how to make it all work in a flow that makes sense to me, that's going to keep me motivated to pick that gear up and use it to create, and that I don't fall into the trap of, oh, I need this, and then I get it and decide, I really don't need that. And then I, you know, I basically waste the money on getting it. This is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna go camera by camera. The A7R IV, fantastic camera. Best camera I've ever had for stills. And that's pretty much all I use it for. Now, the one time I hooked up my Ninja to it and brought you along when I was birding, that was a lot of fun. You got to see what I saw and most people would seem to enjoy that. Some people didn't, whatever. Can't please everybody. But when it gets right down to it, that camera is amazing. I have it immediately, I bought it set up with the grip because it has to have that grip on there. I love those big cameras to sort of balance out the lenses that I use. Now, for the most part, the lens that lives on that camera now is the Sony 200 to 600 because I'm, I'm out birding, doing things like that. If I don't have that lens on there, a lot of the times I end up putting on the Sigma 105 f1.4, another big heavy lens, not as long, but it's very heavy. And you know, having that A7R IV with the big grip, the actual hand grip, and the battery grip really balances all that out. And I love that camera. It isn't going anywhere. I'm gonna be using that for a long time. Then I ended up getting this A7C. Now, the A7C by itself, you know, everybody says, oh, it's just an A7 III with some changes. It's not the A7 III. Don't kid yourself, it isn't an A7 III. In theory, it has a lot of the same components, but it's not an A7 III. It's a completely different camera. And yet, oh, people, oh, they put all this old stuff into it. Why would you waste the money on old technology? Because it's not old technology. It's got new autofocus system, which is blazing. It's amazing. It's got new this, new that. It's not the same camera. It's not the A7 III. It is the A7C, completely different camera. Now, one of the things about it is that people seem to have liked that they put it in that rangefinder style body. So it's the smallest full frame camera that was on the market at the time, or may, might still be, I don't know, don't care. That in itself is neat if you like to have a smaller camera, but it also has some shortcomings because of the fact that they did that. Now, one of the things that they did was that they had this ridiculous, and I don't even want to call it a viewfinder, but there it is. I mean, that's it. I mean, look at this thing. It's ridiculous. It's like an afterthought. It's almost like a normal camera when you pull off the eye cup and that's what's left. It's useless. It is, it is incredibly annoying. So I ended up getting one of these, which is basically, uh, I don't know, like an eye cup extender, which isn't even an extender. Now there's no window in here. There's nothing in there. It's basically just so that you have something that you can put your eye up to other than jamming it into the camera. It just slides into the hot shoe and it goes over the existing eye piece, whatever. And then it extends it out. So now, you know, you can get it right up to your eye. That was like a must. As soon as I saw that that existed, I ended up getting one. Truth be told, I don't spend as much time shooting like this as perhaps I should or normally used to, but that's just because of the fact that when you open up the camera's screen, it's just it's just that much more convenient now. And I've gotten used to shooting in this in this method. And a lot of times I, I end up holding it like this and I end up pushing the shutter with my thumb just because it's more comfortable that way for me. And, you know, again, it's a fantastic camera. 
Now, the other shortcoming, if you want to look at it that way, is the grip. The grip is teeny, it's teeny weeny. And when you got big, long monkey fingers like me, it makes it kind of difficult to hold onto the camera. Really doesn't bother me too much because I always put a small rig cage on every camera that I buy. So I bought the first small rig cage that came out for this camera. I still have it. It's in a magical drawer right now because then they came out with a second one and this second one is awesome. If you look at this now, you can see the top of the camera's out to there where the silver is, but look at how much farther out that grip goes because this small rig cage comes with a silicone grip attached to it. And it is absolutely amazing. And you can see how much further that sticks out. Now look at where your fingers go. I mean, it, it, it is like perfect right there. And it just makes holding the camera that much nicer. I, I mean, it's just as good as an A7R4 as far as the grip goes or anything like that. And because of that silicone, it's grippy. It's not gonna slip out of your hand. I have used this outside in the rain and the wind and the sand, sweating, you name it, and it works just fantastic. So the A7C now, once you put on the cage that's got that grip and you add the little eye cup thingy, perfect camera. It, it takes all the lenses that I've already got. Most of the time, I have this Sony 16 to 35 F4 lens on there just because it's nice to have a little bit of reach if you if you need it. When I originally bought the camera, I bought it along with this lens because of the fact that it gave me the perfect vlogging range. I mean, it's 16 millimeter, it's wide. You can get a ton of stuff in the, in the, in the view. We've said this before, let's call it out. Sony's IBIS and their OSS isn't that great. Don't get me wrong, it helps, trust me, but it still isn't that great. Once you get into the, into the, I think it's the A7S3, the FX3 and the A1, all thousands of dollars more, then you start getting decent image stabilization. But for the most part, it isn't that great, even with the combination of the, of the IBIS and the OSS. But that's okay, we all deal with it. So then the other two cameras are the ZV-1 that I have now permanently installed, like I used to have it, up on my little rig here for in-studio, and then my ZV-1 that's the overhead cam that I have been using for the overhead cam. It's a perfect camera for that. Like the ZV-1 all around is one of the greatest cameras that Sony's ever put out. It is so versatile. I mean, it's a great, great camera. Now, I don't use 4K because I don't need to use 4K. I think that the 1080 is great on all these cameras. So I don't feel the need to shoot in 4K. The files are just too big and I don't really think I gain much, especially because I just do a shitty little vlog. You know, I'm not shooting cinematic masterpieces. So I'm fine with it just the way that it is at 1080. Now I did hook this all up and I thought, all right, let me put it in 4K and see what it looks like. But then I got the crop and I had to pull my setup and move it back that much further. And it just been inconvenient. I put it back to 1080 and there it stays. The nice thing about these ZV-1s for what I use it for, the ZV-1 that I have now hooked up that will permanently be my studio camera. That way I don't have to disconnect anything because I was really using the A7C for both studio and out blogging. But the ZV-1 now will stay there and then the overhead, it's stayed the overhead. I haven't really changed that at all, but let's put it this way. I can plug in power, HDMI, and microphone into that camera and I have all my cords and cables and everything all situated and, and zipped down and tied down and in power so that I never have to move this setup and it's perfect. I don't have to zoom on that thing. I don't have to zoom in or out on that one. The overhead camera, I do have to zoom a little bit because you know, if I, if I keep it all the way out, it shows everything because it's just, I mean, it's got that wide of a view. So it's not that bad, but I just zoom in so that now you can see like I've got more than enough room in front of me so that I can put all the gear that I want to show you like right here. It's great. The audio is great. The video is great. Where everything is located is great. And that's the other thing is that if I plug all that shit in to the ZV-1, all that stuff is on the side opposite of the screen. Why the hell they put all this stuff on the same side as the screen. So when you flip out the screen, it's blocked by all those cables. Sometimes they just do dumb things like that. I don't understand why, but I'm not an engineer. I didn't build it. You know, I would have done things a lot differently. 
It's just another reason why the ZV-1 is so awesome because everything is off to the side, not in front of the screen. And then obviously I've had hooked up to the Ninja and it's a great picture. I'm doing this video right now as a way to, now that I've got all this set up and all my lighting is done and powered and all that stuff, and my table is where it needs to be and all my gear is where it needs to be, I wanted to see if this thing pulses. Like it was pulsing because when I had it hooked up to this A7C with the 16 to 35 in the studio set up the way that it is now, it, it kept pulsing and hunting. So I had to switch it to manual to get it to stop doing that. Now I do have that ZV-1 there hooked up with the product showcase because I want to be able to, to put my hand up there and pull things down and show you stuff and have it automatically like boom look at how fast that did that and now it's back on me so I wanted to have that ability because a lot of times I'm pulling stuff up and I'm holding it up and I'm showing you and, and it just wasn't doing it. I also took it off of active stabilization. That was another thing that was cropping in and I was moving shit and I was like, oh, you dummy, you forgot to take off the active stab. That's it. Pretty much I have those four cameras. Now, again, I'm not talking about like my Insta360 or my GoPro Hero 8. I don't consider those cameras because I don't really use them that way. Once I got all these Sonys all together and doing what I needed to do, I don't really use those cameras all that much. Pretty much every time I leave, I have the A7C. Bottom line is, is that I think I have now finally got my gear carved out into the flow that I need to have. And that all culminated today with me getting the ZV-1 set up for in-studio use. It's not coming on the road with me anymore. I have found definitely that even though I did use it for running and gunning for a long time since I got it, I mean, I like the camera so much I bought two of them. I mean, if that's not a testament that, you know, I thought, oh, maybe I should get a, a ZV-E10. That way I can use the lenses and all that kind of stuff. And I'll use that one for my studio cam and all that. And I was thinking, why the hell would I do that? Because since I'm in here controlling the light, I don't have to worry about the fact that it's not that great in low light. And if I need low light, then I have the A7C with an F 1.8 20 millimeter lens. So, you know, I can cover that stuff. And I showed that test before when I was on the road up in Frederick, Maryland. I took it out with me when I went to dinner. By the time I left dinner, it was dark out. And I used it all the way from the restaurant back to the hotel and everywhere in between. And I mean, you could see me. Was it like this? No, of course not but it, it was night inside of a forerunner. So what, what did you expect? When it gets right down to it, what I've got right now with these four cameras is the bomb. I'm good to go. So again, I have my Sony a7R4, which is strictly for stills. I have my Sony a7C, which is my go-to camera that I will take out with me pretty much anytime I leave the house, in which case I shoot pictures with it and a lot of video, mostly video. And then I have my two ZV-1s that will stay in studio. My main camera there and my overhead camera there. And it's all perfect. And it works perfectly for my flow, the way I like to do things. And it gets me the footage that I want, the pictures that I want with minimal editing. And that's the name of the game for me. I do not want to color grade. I do not want to do all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm not adding special effects. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm shooting this. You're looking at me, I'm controlling the lights, and that's it, and I think it looks great. All right, that's all I've got for you today. I would love to hear what you think. What does this look like? And just for the record, I've got it on manual, 150th, of course, F1.8, and it's at ISO 500, and I think it works just fine. So it's all good to go. All right, again, that's it, that's all I got. I'm gonna stop blathering on. That's all I've got for you today. Let me know what you think. What do you think of these cameras? What are you using? Would you do anything any different? I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up.